And that's all it is. What about potassium argon dating? Does that work? Actually, the numbers are bigger, but the problems and assumptions are exactly the same, and you can demonstrate it doesn't work. Potassium decays very slowly. This chart shows the different elements in their half-life. Carbon has a half-life around 5,700 years, but potassium, it takes 1.3 billion years with a B for half of that to disappear. Very slowly decays. By the way, I would like to point out, Your Honor, just for, you know, appeal, that all of the dating methods are based on the decay of an element. Uranium decays to lead. Potassium decays to argon. They're all moving down the periodic table, not up. All going down. Just point out, keep that in mind in case we need to appeal this case, all right? 80% of the potassium in a small sample of iron meteorite can be removed by distilled water in four and a half hours. Well, if you can take out 80% of it in four and a half hours, how can you trust any dates you're going to obtain by that? The Canadian Journal of Earth Science ran an article and said, in conventional interpretation of potassium argon age, it's common to discard ages which are too substantial, uh, substantially too high or too low compared to the rest of the group or with other available data such as the geologic time scale. There it is. If you test a sample and its number's too high or too low or doesn't match the geologic column, it gets thrown out. Well, then why are you wasting your time and money testing it? You already know how old you'd like it to be. Give it a number. Pick a number. It's dumb. The KBS tuff, a tuff is a layer of ash or lava, or generally ash, that has been packed and turned into rock. It's called tuff, T-U-F-F. K. Brenzenmeyer had been dating these samples of pota with potassium argon dating because here's the theory. When a volcano erupts, the rocks and stuff coming out is really hot and any gases in it should be able to escape. Well, potassium slowly turns into argon and argon is a gas. They use it for welding over at the shop. Argon welding, you know. Argon's a gas. So since potassium turns to argon, when the rock gets melted and shot out of a volcano, all the gas escapes and so the theory says, this new layer should have been, the, the clock is now reset. It is zero years old. Even though when it was in the earth, it's, you know, four billion years old, now all the gar argon's gone because it accumulated this argon for millions of years, but now, poof, it melted and the gas is gone. So we can potassium argon date this lava or ash or vo any volcanic material. Well, they had been dating this layer of ash named after Kay Brenzenmeyer because she did research on it. They said it's 212 to 230 million years old. All the scientists agreed that layer of ash is around 200 million years old. Until Richard Leakey came along in 1972, and he's digging around under the KBS tuff, and he finds a perfectly normal human skull. Everybody panicked and said, wow, how can you have a normal human skull under 200 million year old rock when man didn't even evolve till like 3 million years ago? That's not possible. And so they looked for things. Was this a burial? Did somebody dig through the rock and bury this person down here? You know, was there an earthquake? Is there a fault line near here someplace? Nope. All we can conclude is there's a normal human skull under 200 million year old rock. So what do you conclude? Well, one group studied this and said, well, that proves aliens came here 200 million years ago. Would you, would you just consider that maybe the rock's not 200 million years old? After they found out it could not be an intrusion or a burial or anything else, it had to be legitimately placed there. I mean, it was, the person was buried under this ash layer. They took 10 more samples of the KBS tuff and dated them again. Keep in mind, they'd already dated them a bunch of times. And everybody agreed it's 212 million years old. But now they take 10 more samples and check them again and say, oh, no, it's only 0.5 to 2.6 million. Well, that's way down from 212. Okay, they dropped the number way down but they're still getting a 500% error from 0.5 to 2.6. This is not an exact science. See, back in 1770, they taught the kids the Earth is 70,000 years old. In 1905, they said it's 2 billion years old. By 1969, when I was a kid and they went to the moon, they brought back moon rocks and said, oh, wow, they're 4.5 billion or 3.5 billion years old. That was the official age, 3.5 billion. Today, they tell, and by the way, they did it with potassium argon dating. You can see the article here from the newspaper. Today, they tell the kids it's 4.6 billion years old. Do you realize the Earth is getting older at the rate of 21 million years per year? That's 40 years per minute. Wild dates are always obtained with carbon dating or potassium argon dating. Dates that don't fit the theory are rejected. 
only the correct dates ever get published. Well, then why are you wasting anybody's time? Why? It's not science. The original content cannot possibly be known. You can't know there's been no contamination. You can't know that it's, the decay rates always remain the same. You can't know those things, okay? I'll give you a couple examples of potassium argon problems, and then we'll take a little break. Basalt from Mount Etna in Sicily. By the way, I climbed on Mount Etna when I was over there in Sicily. Uh, they knew it erupted in 122 B.C. They said they knew it erupted 122 B.C. They were written records. Well, the potassium argon dated it and said it's two and a quarter million years old. Excuse me? It should be like 2,000. When they tested lava from a Hawaiian volcano, they knew it erupted in 1801. They, the people watched it happen. That's the lava flow that covered our village, you know, 1801. It gave an age of 1.6 million years old. That's in 1968. Let's see if it gets better. Basalt from a volcano in Hawaii erupted in 1959. When they tested it, it gave an age of 8.5 million years old. Another volcano in Mount Etna from the 1964 eruption gave an age of 700,000. The 72 eruption gave an age of 350,000. It was erupting when I was over there in 2002, I believe. I don't remember. Lava from Mount St. Helens was tested, which my sister lives just 60 miles from there. They tested the lava from Mount St. Helens, brand new lava coming out of the volcano. Grab a sample. How old is it? They tested it five different ways and got five different numbers all the way from 350,000 to 2.8 billion. Notice, all five numbers are different, number one, and all five numbers are wrong, number two. They're wrong. It doesn't work. So again, when you test a sample of known age, it's assumed to work, and if you test a sample of unknown age, it is, you know, it does, we know it doesn't work when you know the age, but when you don't know the age, well, then they say it works. So it just doesn't work. And I'm tired of them using our tax dollars to call that science. That is not science. That's pure imagination. 